As the world faces the ongoing Israel-Hamas war and Russia's invasion of Ukraine with no end in sight, the path to peace may seem more elusive than ever. This past week, that certainly felt the case when seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen, including a Canadian man from Quebec, were killed by Israeli airstrikes in Gaza. One man who understands these difficult conflicts and the quest for peace is retired Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire. Dallaire served as the force commander of the United Nations mission in Rwanda during the 1994 genocide. And this past week, he released a new book called The Peace, A Warrior's Journey that looks at the past, present, and future of war through his own experiences. And Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire is with us now. General Dallaire, good to have you back on our program. Thank you for making the time. Thanks for the invitation. You've written a lot in the past, and you continue to do so in this book about working toward peace. Quote, rather than continuing to focus on winning wars, we needed to set our minds on shaping peace. Do I interpret that as you think there's a lack of political will, essentially, to reach peace? There is no political will. In fact, when, when in fact, there's no statesmanship either. Uh, we've got a lot of political people, and we absolutely need them for democracy because you need political people committed to democracy and the advancement of it, but there, there's none who seem to be able to rise above it in a fashion that doesn't necessarily have to call for the massive use of power to establish an atmosphere of security that might lead to a truce, let alone even think about trying to go to peace. And so uh, due to that non wanting to engage, not wanting to take risks, not wanting to take casualties, particular uh, when it is not in their self-interest, well, things like the concept of responsibility to protect was brought in in 2005, which, which said that if a nation is being massively abused in its, uh, in its human rights or the country can't stop it, uh, then the rest of the world has a responsibility to go in and protect them. Well, with that, and Canada having led that study, uh, no one wants to use it. No one's got the guts to use it. So we published, when I was uh, as a senior fellow at the Montreal Institute of Genocide Studies, the, a concept called the will to intervene. And the closest we got to anything uh, was to tell that it was in the self-interest to be engaged and not in their self-interest to stay aloof from the conflicts that have no borders anymore in the world. General, I'll just pick up on, on part of what you were saying there and ask, ask you if you could to apply it to uh, the current context right now, particularly around the two conflicts we're all very familiar with, uh, starting with uh, Israel, the Israel-Hamas war. You have done so much work with the impact of conflict on kids. And I'm wondering, as you watch this unfold, what's going through your mind from that front? Absolute total disgust. Disgust on all sides discuss in no one really looking to establish lasting peace, uh, discuss in the use of power and the abuse of power, discuss in uh, throwing by the wayside all the conventions and declarations of human rights and all the rights of uh, in, in war of armed conflict and so on, uh, and uh, a disengagement, and I'm using that term uh, deliberately, in the world really wanting to go in and prevent, let alone stop, a conflict in the Middle East, which is crucial to the peace in the world. Uh, nobody uh, is, is using the responsibility to protect of civilians as an instrument to actually stop this fighting. So I'm not hearing peace. All I'm hearing is, can we work out a little truce for a while uh, and uh, rage at certain extreme scenarios like we've seen uh, recently with the seven uh, uh, NGOs being, being uh, members being killed. Well, they've killed over a hundred UN staff. Uh, they've, they've, they've slaughtered over 30,000 uh, Palestinians. I have uh, uh, seen the proof that in fact, uh, national interest, personal interest dominates through the use of force, uh, any types of solution that people might want to bring to establishing peace. And what they ultimately have created, in fact, is generational wars, because the kids 
that are going through what they're seeing and the children of the world that are watching that genocide go on are learning a horrific lesson for the future. I want to ask to conclude about something you do reflect on in the book, and I can hear it in your voice as well, and that is the experience you endured in Rwanda, what you witnessed in Rwanda. You came out of that situation and the world did, um, you know, with institutions and plans and all sorts of designs to use peace as an objective. And much of that has been disregarded through the conflicts that we are seeing now and we have seen recently. Is that personally frustrating to you? It, it is a, a overt demonstration uh, that uh, the world has so much to yet grow into its concept of establishing a desire for humanity to thrive versus a humanity to survive uh, and even a humanity that wants to survive on this planet. We have not gone to that higher plane. We are still fiddling in the tactics, in the self-interest, in the borders, in which I am firmly in belief that the younger generations, the millenniums, the Zs, the As, who are already global, the generations without borders, they're seeing a different world. It's an incredible, crucible time. And they are going to push the other generations aside and they're going to be reinforced by the presence of women. Women will break this code with the younger generations if they finally become the equal of men and rebuild the fundamental premises of what our institutions have been built on. I'll leave it on that note. General Dallaire, I appreciate your time and your insights today. Thank you. Well, you got a, an easy version. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, General.